I'm Kevin Brown, and I'm the author of Equivalence of the Riemann Hypothesis, Volume 1, Arithmetic Equivalence, and Volume 2, Analytic Equivalence. The hypothesis is important in mathematics because it's to do with the distribution of primes. Now, primes generate the integers and the rational numbers and their completions and extensions and closures. And so most of the higher level objects um, of mathematics. And so the primes are very important. Um, however, we know very little about their distribution, um, which is what the Riemann hypothesis has something to say about. Um, we barely know enough in order to be able to get the asymptotic average um, of the primes. Now, with the Riemann hypothesis, we can get a very good idea of the error um, in the average. In fact, we can get the best possible um, expression for the error um, in that. Now, it turns out that the Riemann hypothesis is not enough. But, however, there are um, other types of functions, um, of which the Riemann hypothesis has something to say, um, called L functions and automorphic forms, um, which we need. Um, now, these are important also. Uh, for example, um, there are Dirichlet L functions, which have their Riemann hypotheses like that. And these say something about the distribution of primes in arithmetic progressions. Now, it turns out that for applications, um, these are more useful than the classical um, Riemann hypothesis. But of course, we need to resolve the issue of the Riemann hypothesis first before we move on to these higher level um, objects. Thus, we can see the Riemann hypothesis is important um, because primes are important for the mathematical enterprise. Now, that is a really hard question. <laughs> it's been shown to be true for the first 10 to the power of 11th of the zeros going up the critical line um, or thereabouts. Um, but many people think that we need to get to something like 10 to the power of 100 before the true nature of the Riemann zeta function um, is revealed. So it's sort of evidence of the truth. Um, another more powerful uh, bit of evidence is the resolution by Deline of the vague conjectures. Now these are for uh, function fields for varieties. And um, they have a form of the Riemann hypothesis associated with, with those structures. Um, and so this Riemann hypothesis has been proved to be true uh, like that. Now, Bay himself uh, wanted to build a bridge between this function field uh, Riemann hypothesis um, and the classical Riemann hypothesis. But that was 60 years ago. And many people have tried to construct this bridge, um, and nobody has succeeded. So both of these two pieces of evidence, and there are others as well, um, are only partial evidence of the truth. So it may well be that the Riemann hypothesis is in fact false. Um, and that would not be such a bad thing because it would mean that there were some um, sort of irregularities or interesting things to do with the distribution of primes associated with the falsity um, of the Riemann hypothesis. And these, um, these different parts of the distribution would be, have to be a subject, of course, to investigation. So that could be interesting. It's probably true, um, and that would be a great outcome. However, if it were proved to be false, that certainly wouldn't be the end of the world. Yes, I do think a solution will be found, even if the problem is found to be undecidable. In that case, and it's spelt out in the books, um, that we will have to assume that the Riemann hypothesis is true. It would never be proved like that. The recent advances in number theory um, Fermat's last theorem, the ternary goldbach conjecture, um, the existence of arithmetic progressions of primes of arbitrary length, um, 
and the existence of bounded gaps between primes, these solutions give us a great deal of confidence that problems which were regarded as being intractable for many, many years um, could find their solution. And this has all happened, really, in the last few decades. Um, so we can be inspired that some bold new attempts on the Riemann hypothesis um, could be made. For example, um, we know that the Riemann hypothesis has something to do with the distribution of primes, as I said. So do I think a solution to the Riemann hypothesis uh, will ever be found? Um, well, yes, I do. Um, as I said earlier, Ramanujan or Turing, each of them, I believe, could have solved the Riemann hypothesis should they have had the opportunity um, to do so. There are mathematicians working today who have the ability, I believe, to solve this problem um, so it can be done. Whether it will be done in our generation, I don't know. However, it could be done. I hope so. So in spite of the unity of modern mathematics, um, the can't, same can't be said for uh, the mathematicians, uh, the totality of the minds of the mathematicians. So when it comes to individuals, most have a dominant way of actually working um, on mathematics. So some, most of their work is algebraic. Uh, for some, it is analytical. Uh, for others, it's visual or geometric. Um, some focus on the arithmetic side or computational side, um, some on the combinatorial side. So these are many and various. Um, now, the books focus on these different approaches to the Riemann hypothesis. So the individual equivalences are oftentimes posed um, in the context of one or other of these approaches to mathematics. And people can, using the equivalences, can work within that particular set of languages and properties and results um, and ignore the original foundation uh, for the hypothesis, depending on their turn of mind. Or they could combine uh, several of the um, equivalences. Or they could just use the equivalences as an inspiration uh, for some ideas from the past, but new, utterly different ideas uh, for the future. So the books will hopefully help in that particular way. So the books are intended to provide accessible pathways um, to the Riemann hypothesis. Um, they're written in hopefully a user-friendly um, way so that well, all the details of proofs, for example, are given within there and the background materials as well um, so that people can um, observe you know, what goes into uh, the equivalences and they can participate in the thinking of the wonderful minds that have evolved them um, over the years since the, these things started to appear in the early part of the 20th century. Um, so in this way, uh, hopefully, the books will help um, for the resolution of the Riemann hypothesis. Um, now, um, they're not the end of the story when it comes to equivalences. Um, they were published towards the end of 2017. Already this year, 2018, um, we have seen two new wonderful advances um, by some wonderful mathematicians in the area of Riemann hypothesis equivalence. One, a new equivalence. The other, an elaboration advancement on an older equivalence. And um, both of them relate strongly to two of the equivalents um, in the volumes. So it's certainly not the end of the story.